Welcome to Christian Nutrition, the show where we review every single episode of VeggieTales chronologically. And by we, I mean just me. Welcome to the definitive review of Sleeping Beauty. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me do that again. Sweet Pea Beauty. I'm sorry. VeggieTales just seems like they're in the mood to uh, rip off Disney lately. First Pistachio, now Sweet Pea Beauty. Come on, come on, VeggieTales, at least be a little bit more subtle about it. Now, I must point out that the previous girl-centric episodes haven't been all that great. I mean, Esther's probably the low point, and Madame Blueberry was, you know, average. But let's not dwell on that. Let's give Sweet Pea Beauty uh, a fair shot, despite probably being a parody of uh, Sleeping Beauty. This is actually really interesting. I'm hoping the whole episode is just Larry trying on different hats. Hey, Larry. What you doing? Oh, hi, Petunia. Bob's getting the next show ready, and I'm just trying to find my look. This dialogue is telling me there will be no Bob in this episode, and that Petunia will take his place. See? I can't find my look. Why did he do that confident wink at the camera if he doesn't like his look? Oh, you don't look goofy. You look like... You in a fedora. So he looks goofy. Let's not lie to him now. Besides, hats. I love hats. Nice hat. Just keep digging your grave, VeggieTales. Just keep digging because uh, the beginning's supposed to, you know, start us off on the right foot, get us in the mood for, you know, a good story with some jokes. So far, you failed. Nope. Not working. At least this covers my face. He is that hero. So some girl with braces and glasses tells us how she gets made fun of at school for having braces and glasses. I guess I should have saw that one coming. Roll film. And now the story of Snoodlerella. Uh, who? I, I think I need to go clean out my ears because there's no way uh, you said who I thought you just said. And now the story of Snoodlerella. Snoodlerella. Oh, Veggie Tales is serious. Okay, uh, they're they're doing this on purpose because they saw they saw my review of a Snoodles Tale that I did previously, and uh, now they're purposely testing my patience. Well, I'm not going to give them the satisfaction. Skip. Next up on Veggie Shopping Network, pants. Pants? What? You can wear them if you're big. You can wear them if you're small. They're pants if you're short and shorts if you're tall. You can wear them in the spring. You can wear them in the fall. They're pants if you're short and shorts if you're tall. They're pants if you're short and shorts if you're tall. I love it. Sixteen more without a four. You can't buy these in any store. They're just like your granddaddy wore. Hey. What is this? Are these hand-drawn pants with eyes? What kind of drugs is Larry on right now? Up there in her tower, so pretty but sour, it's Queen Blueberry. You know, it's been a while since so I've seen Sleeping Beauty, but I guess it would make sense that Madame Blueberry is the queen. Actually, it doesn't make sense, but we'll roll with it. I'm sure she'll want to kill Petunia at some point. That seems like every Disney princess movie. The Kingdom of Most Fair, yes, that's the name, Most Fair, is holding a fair to see which lady is the most fair. I didn't make any of that up. The queen wins every year in what I'm sure is a totally fair vote in the kingdom of most fair. Oh, I need more concealer, no? What just happened right now? I need more concealer, no? Wow. You have to be kidding me right now. This is something I would expect from like an early 90s episode of VeggieTales or Cartoons for Christ. Not VeggieTales circa 2010, which is making me notice that it seems as if this whole episode is animated on an older program. Like... This has the look of an earlier VeggieTales episode, not a current VeggieTales episode. I don't recall the Search for Noah's Umbrella, which released only a year prior, or Pistachio, looking this old school in terms of an art style animation. Doomed, and we'll all have to bid you. Mud guy. Something just seems really off here. As I said before, I would just, I would honestly believe if they like made this episode way earlier than 2010 and it just like kind of sat on shelf until one day they're like, well, I guess we might as well release it. Veggie Tales, you are really disappointing me right now. Through endless exposition, we find out that a decree was passed in the past that says whomever is the most beautiful in the kingdom is the queen. This, this seems a bit shallow. 
Besides, my cranberry would never have passed the beauty decree if appearance was not the most important thing in the kingdom! You know, this is seeming a bit more reminiscent of Snow White and not Sleeping Beauty, but let's continue to make sure. Oh. You rang. Oh, the mirror speaks! Must be from Sharper Image. This is definitely Snow White. Watch her ask that mirror who's the most beautiful or fair of them all or whatever. Uh, Am I the most beautiful in the kingdom of most fair? Told ya, I guess I misinterpreted because Sweet Pea Beauty, Sleeping Beauty, seems like that's what the obvious parody is, but VeggieTales went in a whole different direction with Snow White. Which makes me wonder, where are the dwarves? But no one told the queen amidst the forest fields of green that Blueberry Sun Prince Larry called Miss Sweet Pea his best friend. Freend his best friend? Freend? You said freend. Yes, it rhymes with queen and green. Minstrel songs are supposed to rhyme. But it still doesn't make any sense. But freend isn't a word. I was going to say spleen, but that would have taken the song in a whole different direction. Oh, that makes sense. Go ahead and alter words as you see fit, Mr. Lunt. Isn't it the most gorgeous day? If you don't mind the mud. That was quite a rainstorm last night. But if it never rained, we couldn't make mud castles. Sweet Pea is so quirky and original, that's what makes her fun and likable. Can I say something crazy? <laughs> Will you marry me? <gasps> Can I say something even crazier? Yes. There's so much more here to adore here. It's more beautiful. It's kind of <laughs> Oh, this is actually a pretty good Disney song knockoff. I can't deny that I am enjoying it. Beautiful and nice and nice. God whispers you're beautiful To me oh, oh, sorry, I thought this was an ensemble song This is terrible news So what if there's one girl prettier than you? It's easy to banish one girl <gasps> Really? Uh, yeah, Madam Blueberry, or should I say Queen Blueberry, you should know how easy it is to banish somebody from the kingdom. You're the queen. We find out that this talking mirror has actually come to life before. In fact, he has helped Madam Blueberry's mother and grandmother. He then tricks Madam Blueberry into drinking an espresso that reveals her inner beauty by placing it on the outside, aka it makes her really ugly. Petunia then gives us God's definition of beautiful, which is based on your heart. The mirror then convinces Blueberry to banish Petunia from the kingdom. The lovely sweet pea banished, she has done nothing wrong. As we shall be telling this song, the queen is jealous. Nothing new, but threatened by this nothing new. The best part of this episode is easily Mr. Lunt and Jimmy, and it's it's not even close. The queen has made a song about to rid herself of sweetie sweet now. No pretty girls will be allowed. And stay out. Now that sweet is gone. We then see Petunia float down the river until she finds a place to sleep. Oh. This bowl is too hot. This bowl is too cold. And this bowl is just... Ew. Who thought putting their dirty socks on their food was a good idea? I am Greeny. And this is Gordy, Greeny, Goober. How do? Goffa, Gusto, and Unbrilliant. I can fit an acorn in my belly button. A whole acorn in your belly button? Wow, that is impressive. You must show me the ways. We are the seven Snoopies. Why, you're adorable. We know. Our adorableness is why we were banished. Oh, so now we meet the seven dwarves, but in this case, they're adorable French peas, which makes me really, really confused as Sweet Pea Beauty and Sleeping Beauty just seem like the natural fit here, but obviously this has become Snow White. If only we weren't so adorable. Oh, the humanity. Oh, the humanity! But there are eight of us. That's more than the Queen's guards. Gilfer, why didn't you think of that? W wait a second. Are you telling me the Queen's kingdom has less than eight guards? This sounds like a kingdom that could be toppled at any moment. Who thought that having this little security was a good idea? I'll name mine. Steve. Oh, that makes more sense. The mirror then tells Madame Blueberry to poison Petunia with a cup of apple cider, ignoring the blatant cannibalism that Queen Blueberry should be shocked by, you know, by doing that. She decides to host a dinner with Petunia in order to murder her. Wow, this took a really dark turn. Petunia then sucks up to the queen by telling the queen that she has a good heart, even though the heart can deceive and that's the Bible, but 
<sighs> Let's not talk about that right now. All this seems to work and the queen regrets her decision to poison Petunia. To the queen, the most fair of all. Wow, murder in a Veggie Tales episode. Did anyone else notice how when the cup fell, none of the juice actually spilled? Heck, it didn't even move in the cup. Now the crown will be mine. <laughs> so that's what the mirror's been up to. No one could have possibly have seen this twist coming. Robin Good, Mr. Lunt, Jimmy, and a skunk all attempt to stop the mirror from stealing the crown. Sweet pea, skunk, minstrels. Action scene! La la, la 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 The action scene ensues and we see the mirror chase the skunk up the castle. Larry gets some assistance from the seven peas who launch him up the castle, but not before the mirror drops Sweet Pea off the tower. Oh no! Larry and the peas catch her and save the day. No! Fine! You may have saved Sweet Pea, but I still have the crown! Wow, his mouth is like moving at a weird frame rate. See what I mean? It's almost like it is running at half the frame rate as the show. I can shoot an acorn out of my belly button. Where? No! <laughs> Game over, dude. You were just defeated by an acorn shot out of a belly button. So everyone learns their lesson and they all live happily ever after. The end. For the Lord sees not as man sees. Man looks on the outward appearance but the Lord looks on the heart. Or my paper sack that changes expressions. <gasps> Whoa, how's it do that? Uh, no, Larry, you better answer that question. How does a paper bag change expressions? Always remember, God made you special. And he loves you very much. Bye! That was Sweet Pea Beauty. It was an average parody of Snow White and the beginning where they parodied Cinderella was just whatever, a big bag of whatever. The only good parts really were the silly song and Mr. Lunt and Jimmy. Mr. Lunt and Jimmy make this episode worth watching once. Stay tuned as next time we review Princess and the Pop Star. Remember that God made you special and he loves you very much. Bye. <laughs>